Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Silk. We are doing a kind of strategic recap for uh, Operation From Russia With Love. Uh, this is the end of turn six. I thought I'd kind of just do a little little chat about it. Uh, the, the Germany turn is in process. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting for it to get uploaded, so I thought I'd go ahead and post this before I go uh, process that a little bit later here. So uh, let's talk a little bit about where we're at. So Interesting enough, this is, uh, if you look at the income here, uh, Great Britain being this much higher than Germany is certainly the first thing that calls out at you. Uh, we'll kind of explain that a bit. Other than that, um, everything else about how you would expect, oh, again, the Allies are actually already at war, so they're, they're kind of naturally inflated in Japan's. Uh, France is inflated. Um, it's a little bit different than what you'd see sometimes, but that's just the nature of where we're at. I'm actually going to put that on turn 7 because that's where we're about to be. Uh, CCP's dead, so we don't need to be on there anymore. Um, and they're down to 3. All right. Um, kind of similar. You know, the Allies are collecting all their objectives because nothing's happened to them yet. And Japan has theirs, but Germany's not uh, collecting theirs because they're not at war with a major power yet. This is the more fun part. Look at this tech chart. Um, this is a massive tech game, relatively speaking, through the first six turns. Uh, Germany already has five, Texas stage two. Britain's got three, Italy's got two, Japan's got two. I mean, uh, just just a massive, massive set. Um, really interesting to see what happens over, over the next two turns here as uh, techs might get completed. It's really a big deal on turn uh, eight. Who, who's able to complete attack and what are they able to do with it kind of thing. And uh, curious to see what Hamilton comes up with because he obviously only has four only has four factories, but he's got six. Count them, six techs. Oh, so good uh, at stage two. So he had to kind of really figure out what it is he wants to actually do amongst all of these. And, and uh, we'll learn a few lessons based on whether he, for example, does advanced submarines or does he try to do jets and LRA. Like that kind of tells you something else. But yeah, like, like picture improved, su improved construction submarines, you know, improved factories and mechs. Like that's kind of one scheme. But jet fighters, long range aircraft, improved construction mechs is a very different kind of kind of scheme. Um, there's a lot of, of different ways he can he can go things. Uh, Britain, I think, just because of the subs on the board, is just going to grab both of those and, and run them as, as far as they can. And then uh, board gaming bro, I'm guessing, is still going to go for construction. Seems uh, we'll, we'll get to Italy. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what he's up to, which is it's a little fascinating bit. And then obviously uh, Japan is definitely doing get they're totally gearing up for for Pacific fighting. So they've got improved construction and large ship construction. I want to call this out though. Uh, Japan is two stages ahead of America going into stage seven, which is a great great place for Japan to be. Um, if he can get this done, even one turn ahead of America. It's a big deal. If he could somehow get it done two turns ahead of America, that's how you can just utterly dominate the, the Pacific and get a, a a victory point and win win sea battles and the whole bit. Uh, the the heavy ship heavy battleships are if you can get them into built in mass, um, dominate the seas, as as kind of what happened at Thunderball. Um, just keep an eye out for that. Uh, but I'm very much guessing that improved construction and, and large ship are going to be what you're going to see. Out of Japan, um, Soviets, of course, mine are just exactly what you see here. We're just going to try to kind of scatter shot what we can, which is pretty much what the Americans are doing. They're just kind of grabbing their um, their techs. He's certainly going uh, construction again and, and, and large ship to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Japan. And then the fact that he picked Amphib Doctor kind of tells me also that he wants to do a lot of naval naval fighting. So America's going, going naval, uh, Japan's going naval, and we'll, we'll see what, what Germany comes up with in, in Britain effectively is kind of going naval with these two, um, so that's something to kind of kind of keep an eye on, and look out for. As for the actual game board, uh, the big deal, of course, is this: is all of uh, the the downside of the the turn six uh, Dow, in which I did kind of think was coming. Um, I just I thought maybe he'd go into Switzerland and Belgium and these two territories in uh, Poland just to get them get them dead and off the board. Um, Given the way that you have all your planes available on that turn six attack, because you don't really need them for Belgium. Belgium, your your tank your tank stack will just crush them. So a lot of times you can use those planes to win these fights here in Belgium 
or in uh, Poland and Switzerland. In, um, once you have Belgium and Switzerland, there's no French defense in the entire game that can stop you. So it's a pretty strong kind of kind of approach to take. Um, but apparently Hambone wasn't aware of what, of what happened with, with Poland here. So that actually kind of caught him by surprise. Um, so we'll see how he deals with this. Um, on the plus side for him, I don't actually like the way the War Enthusiast is defending Paris here. I actually think this is a pretty easy um, puzzle to solve, like these two armies, which is basically, you know, all of these units here, which is uh, 5, 79, 10, 20 units, 10, 16, yeah, a bit over 20 units. Um, these 20 units can just go one in the Lightning War, too, and, and they've got it. Like, it's, it's just that simple. Um, yes, this is 11 militia and, and 3 infantry, and, and but 11 militia even at 3s is only 33 pips. Uh, 3 infantry is another 15, so it's 48 pips plus the, 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 the fighter gets you to 54. Um, that's not a lot. Not, not for this kind of scale of, of fight. Uh, that, that, that army's more than enough to just cut that down. Uh, you kind of risk losing a couple medium armor to some, some lucky ones uh, for target selects. But as long as you eliminate France and only lose five or six guys, it, it doesn't matter. Like, you're fine. So uh, we'll see if that's what you decide to do or not. Um, and that's actually not counting him using these guys. Um, you may see him use these guys against Poland. We'll, we'll, we'll see what he does. Um, but he's, he's... This is kind of a problem. This many infantry sit in here. Um, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, that's definitely not something I want to see as 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 Germany. So I'm curious to see what uh, how Hambone decides to deal with that. But odds are pretty good that you're going to see Paris fall pretty decisively. Uh, you may see some fighting here. This poor dude, he's he's going to get toast. Um, on to the the Battle of Atlantic. I like this a lot. I think he's got a nice um, spread out here of, of just. All sorts of stuff everywhere, everywhere you might want it. Um, he's kind of, you'll notice he's leaving both of these empty as far as his escorts because he wants the subs to go there so that he can he can kill them with the fighters. Is why why that uh, gap is sitting like that. Um, and the plus side is if the, the subs try to attack somewhere, um, he's got he's got French boats to lose instead. So so he's got kind of a nice little little touch there. Um, I, I can get rid of. Hopefully it's no longer there. Um, other parts that interested me all about the map. We'll talk about the Italians in a minute here. Uh, Soviets are just kind of doing the normal thing. This is not going to shock anybody. We're going to probably, if the dice are, are nice to us, go attack uh, Finland next turn and, and see what see what happens. Um, I don't know if Hamlin's going to align uh, Romania or not. Um, so that it's too hard for me to know without know what my, what my income's going to be. Really, really what I'm going to do. But odds, odds are I'm going to at least do some sort of a, a, a action against Finland there. Um, CCP's dead. They're, they're not coming back. Um, maybe Japan decides to kill this guy, but for the cost of the one uh, U.S. oil dollar, I bet he doesn't. I bet he might. He might decide he really wants them to... The CCP never surrenders, so it doesn't... You know, they, they'll, they'll get a recruitment roll at one, but they have no, they have no income. So we'll see uh, if Panzer J really wants to wants to off them or not, um, or the KMT could, to be honest with you as well. But I, I kind of think neither one of them really care enough to to bother until there's something else that, that makes them care. Uh, but we'll see. Um, this is the next part I want to show you here is Burma. Uh, this is a very very large army. It's sitting here in Calcutta. Um, more enthusiast put a lot of effort between his 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 purchases his strategic naval moves and even at running it kind of for the african run here to get a, as many troops into calcutta as possible um he's gonna absolutely make sure that that he keeps calcutta intact um downside of it is he's got a single guy in malaya and he's got three units sitting here over here in uh in sydney so they're they're both stripped pretty bare um however uh panzer j is not really built to fight fec right now um he's got a
There we go. Uh, Panzer J's got this giant set of, of Marines and infantry here. And obviously, he's got more guys here, uh, although he's going to have to get them down somehow. Uh, one transport is not going to do the job. He's going to move his destroyers. and But he'll also see what happens with, with France. If France aligns them to uh, Japan, that'll make his life a lot easier because then the, the 41st can just march like this. Makes life much, 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 much easier on, on Japan when they when they can do that. Otherwise, they have to waste a bunch of time uh, transporting down. But, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what, what Panzer J's doing here. He doesn't have artillery, doesn't have any armor, um, and, and I just don't know how he's going to fight in the jungles. Like, infantry are not going to not gonna be enough to get that done, and Global War Enthusiast, obviously, has built four A guns to shoot down the planes. So, we'll, we'll have to see how Panzer J's planning on dealing with that, but maybe he's just decided he's not going to care as much about the FEC. Um, again, he's if you look here, he's got four heavy cruisers. He is and heavy ships in proof construction. He's clearly leaning towards a, a naval fight that he, that he wants to have uh, either with England or America or both. Um, so well, he did sign, he signed the non-aggression pact with me because I have nothing left to fight for here, obviously. So that, that makes his life easier. Um, but yeah, keep, I'm, I'm real curious to see what, what, what he does here. I'm not sure what his, what his plan is. He, he certainly does have the firepower to take the DEI if he wants it. Um, Malayo is a pushover. Philippines is a pushover. The you know, later game here. But I'm not, it's going to be interesting. Kind of kind of stay tuned on that. And then the last thing that brings us to is Italy. Um, I absolutely love uh, Board Gaming Bro. I have got to play with him just, just a little bit. And he's just super, super fun. And uh, he plays with a lack of fear that I simply cannot emulate very well. Um and it's infectious and super, super fun, and I totally love it. And I have absolutely no idea what he's doing here. Just none. Um, so, yeah, I wish I could offer you some insight or predictions or, or something. But uh, I, I don't know what this is. Um, Global War Enthusiast, again, made sure he, he bulked up Egypt. He put the A-guns there to, to stop the Italian fighters, because fighters are how you fight in desert. Um, but I, I, I don't know what, what we're, what we're dealing with. This is, this is fascinating. It's, it's really interesting. Oh, uh, shout out actually to, to, uh, board gaming bro on that. You moved these, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I think you tried to do this. And as far as I know, you can't go from M3 to M4. Um, there's no. Uh, crossing in your, your coastal subs. This is this is V4, so these ports don't give you plus one movement. You gotta have a sub base, and that's a seaplay hangar, not a sub base. Uh, it's really why you want these guys stationed down here, and then you just leave them there until you you need them to do something else. So uh, let us know where these guys are. I'm guessing you know maybe they're here, maybe you put all three here, one or the other. Uh, kind of depends on which. This is also not a great spot because the same problem. It's one two. No matter what you do, it's a, just a terrible, terrible place to have uh, coastal subs sitting. So uh, let me know where you want those. And we'll, we'll get that uh, figured out, kind of thing. Um, I think that's it, though. That should be all the whole kind of stuff I had. Just wanted to give you guys some little recap of what was going on and some insights into what I think is going to happen. You know, again, uh, advantages of, of playing by myself. I don't have to worry about messing up one of my partners. And uh, that, that should be that. Uh, Take care, everybody. Game on, and, and have a great day.